three, two. Hey, everybody. Action. Welcome to Trickle Down Geekonomics. I'm Jim. I'm Sean. And we're going to talk to you about the kind of the future of uh, and the overview of where we're go what we're going to do uh, coming up here in the next videos you'll see on um, our channel. And um, one thing, I mean, we'll be doing reviews, we'll be doing playthroughs, uh, unboxings, um, maybe talk about jokes. Well, if you can call them that. Uh, cinema, uh, we might do some movie reviews and, and that kind of thing. Maybe talk about games we'd like to see um, be made, all those kind of topics. So we'll be in, we're working on starting a podcast as well. So when we get that going, we'll let you know and hopefully you'll tune in. So yeah, we're going to, uh, I forgot what I was, my last movie one. reviews. Yeah, all that kind of, any, any, all I may discuss literature and uh, some of the finer arts. Books. Yeah. Yeah, books. Not the picture books, right. chapter books. Um, but yeah, so there's there's all those kind of topics. Is anything that we decide, even sports, who knows? Tobacco. Tobacco. Um, we do like smoking cigars. We don't want to promote tobacco use, but we do oh. enjoy. <laughs> um, anywho, uh, so what, one thing I want to do is I want to talk about, We have a, I've got a bunch of stuff that I kickstarted, so I just want to throw that out. And I know uh, Sean, I know Ken um, as well. Um, give me, give me your, a couple of your Kickstarters, and then I'll I'll do one of mine, and then we'll kind of go back and forth a little bit. All right. So uh, one that's going to be ending in four days here is um, Hour of Need. It's a it's by Blacklist Games. It's the Brady Brothers. Um, I've already got two of their games, uh, Street Masters and uh, um, Brook City. Brook City is a great kind of an 80 cops uh, board game. And then Street Masters is like Street Fighter in a board game. Really good card system that they've created. I can't think of the name of the card system that, that it, it's under, but it's really cool. And then now our needs are comic book game. So it's going to be the same system, you think? Same system, same a little, little variant um, in it, but it looks really cool. Um, and I'm excited about that game. Those guys make really good stuff. So that's one I've got going. It, it, go through another one because I, I have a much shorter list. Okay. So, um, Chronicles of uh, Drunagar: Age of Darkness, which is another kind of dungeon explore game with a really neat um, layered terrain system. And um, it's got a really cool, even just little things like when you come to a door, it's got a card for the door and you unfold the card and then it shows you how you set up the next map and, and all the information about it, which is really cool. It's got a really neat... Um, kind of a complex, uh, not complex, but a lot of variety in how you build up your character and how you use their abilities and kind of, again, a little resourcey moving, you know, you spend points, <clears throat> energy from different areas to do different things. And it's, it's really cool. Really, it looks really uh, like it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Want me to do another one? I've got Anno Domini 1666, oh, which yeah, I backed a, a long time ago. And as I'm sitting here, I'm em embarrassed because I'm going to be uh, a little bit uh, vague on the nature of the game because I don't recall as much as I should about the mechanics of it. Uh, I have been following the updates and so forth, but it's a sort of a Three Musketeers type uh, tabletop game with looks what looks to be a beautiful set of miniatures, mm -hmm. and uh, so this intrigue. Uh, you know, I don't know that it's specifically limited to the Three Musketeers type of uh, genre, but uh, it's that era, and uh, so it, and, and there've been some delays, and it's a uh, Polish-based game. In other words, Polish designers, um, and uh, I think they've done some nice things in the past, but it's just the communication is, and it's it's not a negative in any way. It's just a, sometimes a little bit, uh, you know, sort of the English as a second language in the communication department. So 
I'm not, re and, and I'm half the time I'm reading these updates, uh, you know, while I'm driving or things like that. So <laughs> just kidding. I, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but I am reading them while I'm distracted or watching, uh, you know, Mandalorian or something like that. Right, so, right. so, uh, I'm not paying a ton of attention. I'm just going to wait till the game gets here. But, uh, uh, but the miniatures look really good, and there's a broad range of figures that come with that are going to come with this game. Well, I know I know it has like so. you know cool things built into it, like you can jump on tables and do like cool, you know, daring do, dare, yeah, yeah, daring do stuff. And it, that part I know they built into the game, which is really neat. Um, and it and it's not something that I don't I don't remember the playthrough thing that I saw in it. It wasn't like a some overly complex set of rules to make you do that. It just kind of flowed really well. I hope so. I. You know, Three Musketeers. I I love the the books, uh, some of the movies. Yeah. You know, I love I love the genre. It's one of my favorites. Oh, it's great. And I uh, played a you know a couple of simple Three Musketeers type games right. uh, at a convention, but we've never really done one with any great length. And so I hope this would could become that. Yeah, uh, something that we really dive into. I, when I saw that, I was thinking about backing it, and it just left my mind. And I think I had plenty of things I was backing, and I'm yeah. glad you did it because I'm looking forward to that one. So I have Aeon Trespass Odyssey, and again, that's it's a, again it's a one to four player game. It's it's um, a big adventure, massive adventure game, beautiful miniatures. Again, Kingdom Death when that came out, it really changed the landscape of figures. I mean, just crazy things with you know hundred arms and eyes and just really well sculpted figures. Well, and Trespass, is, um, as far as the figures go, are all in that same vein. Sci-fi range? It's or? a combination. It's, it's like, uh, you know, the Odyssey stuff. So you're, um, you've got a ship. M mythological. And, yeah, and then you're, you're controlling these titans, these, um, you're building them and you control them. So you're, you're these massive, huge, like, I don't know about Godzilla size, but they're big. And you control them and you can build them and you have a ship and you're, you can build your ship up and, and that kind of stuff as you adventure and you know your this map unfolds and um seventh continent kind of a vibe which is a game where you you have these cards that play out and kind of build choose your path story kind of thing and um but beautiful figures the game looks really cool there's some videos out on it see they made a million bucks on it or on the kickstarter they're Pol a polish company as well um into the unknown is the company. So yeah, it looks really cool. I can't wait for that one. Um, I have Dark Trails RPG, which is from the Dungeon Crawl Classics folk, mm -hmm. or, or at least maybe a third party. I'm not sure if it's being done by Goodman Games, which is fabulous, uh, or or uh, an a, a affiliated, you know, third party. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so that's going to be a Western. Uh, you know, uh, Western sort of horrorish, I think, uh, role-playing game in the DCC fashion. So cool. much like Dungeon Crawl Classics or Mutant Crawl right. Class. Is it Mutant Crawl? MCC, Mutant Crawl Classics, um, which both mm. we've enjoyed playing those. And uh, so similar thing in the Western, dark Western genre that's going to be coming up. And... Uh, uh, I've been wanting to do a Western game. Well, we have Western Legends, but I've been wanting to do a Western RPG for quite a while, yeah. for decades, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Going back to uh, some other some other uh, brands and, and games that. Uh, well, we uh, kind of did with Shadows of Brimstone until a yeah. little bit of that, which is a great system. Tabletop, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I, you know, thought for a long time. I like westerns and and it'd be a good rpg setting and then uh, adding this uh you know the dcc style might make it a little uh, a fun thing to try out yeah I and see how that works that. you know you've got uh so many uh, cinematic aspects to it that uh, uh i think that'll be a fun yep. a fun thing and one thing i do plan to do with that in addition to you know getting obviously just the game and and uh, seeing where that goes is uh working to build up some of the scenics to be oh, able to do yeah. 3D, you know, with figures and so forth. Yep. So that'll be awesome. Looking forward to that one coming out next year. For sure. So another one is Sleeping Gods by Ryan Lockett, and um, you know, great game designer. And again, another one of these big uh, open world storybook type games. Um, I'm sure a lot of people that are listening know about it. Um, they made he made uh, over a million dollars. So 
it's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, I know he's still working on the game itself. So, um, but yeah, it's just one of those big kind of seventh continent again, story driven games. You're laying cards out and adventuring and picking your path and it affects future uh, paths in the game and all that kind of thing. So it's just, it, it looks really, really cool. Should we check with Ken and see what, uh, what yeah. he's got on the drawing board? Yeah, uh, well, um, what channel? I can't remember how do we get him in here. Is it channel dumbass? What? Channel 10. Channel, channel 10, 10, Ken. Okay. Uh, there we go. Hey, Ken. So what do you got coming up on Kickstarter? What games have I mm -hmm. kickstarted? Well, there are actually a few. There's uh, um, Be a Better Human, which is the sequel to Nakamura Tower, done by uh, a Polish group. I think they're headquartered in England, but I think they're actually based out of Poland somewhere. Uh, and I, I can't remember the the name of the company now that's doing it. But I didn't actually kickstart it. I, I, there was a late pledging that you could do with it that I did and ordered uh, the basic set <clears throat> and all the Kickstarter goodies, freebies, or uh, stretch goals that came with it. Have not yet received it yet. They're more than a year behind on that. So it's... I don't know if it's something to do with the companies in Poland, like Protoss and Warzone and Aliens vs. Predator, or if it's something else going on. I, I did get confirmation from them via email that my my uh, pledge had shipped. I got no tracking information or anything like that, so I'm cautiously optimistic that it is, in fact, steaming its way to me, uh, I hope. We'll see. Um, uh, but... Uh, I also, of course, Simon, uh, cool mini or not, I've, uh, I've pledged Project Elite, and that's not due until next year, and and also I, uh, but I'm looking forward to that, uh, especially from the miniature standpoint. And I also pledged uh, the group out of Charlottesville, um, Monster Scenery, Monster Terrain, or Monster Fight Club, sorry, and it, their their terrain pre-painted plastic uh, terrain bits. And I got that mostly because it looks like it'll be great for fantasy gaming, war gaming, as well as role playing. You know, might use it for World War II stuff that we do, although it, it's not hyper-realistic looking, it's, it's, but it's not comic book looking either. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what it actually looks like on the table. But boy, oh boy, I got a ton of stuff for not a lot of money from those guys, and it does look really beautiful, and it's all pre-painted. And as we all know, and I love making terrain, but it's the uh, it's the redheaded stepchild of the hobby, right? It, there's always terrain projects that get pushed aside because you have miniatures to paint. And I realize that I am at that point where I'll never finish painting everything I own, um, probably because I still have miniatures from 1977 in my to-do list that are, I'm just I'm never going to get to them because you know we've we've moved on. But uh, you know, and no one wants them. So what I do? What what, what am I going to do with them? Maybe I'll make. Uh, a boat anchor out of them one day, I'm not sure. But the, the biggest Kickstarter project that I currently have that is steaming its way to me because I got the FedEx tra tracking information and it should be here in three days is Simon's Death May Die, the Cthulhu game. Looking forward to that. In fact, when we get it, we'll obviously we'll do an unboxing and then we'll do uh, hopefully an immediately immediate playthrough of it because it's an entirely different mechanic from uh, the zombie side games, which is an excellent mechanic, but it, it's still it's going to play a little differently. And and it's a it's a great premise, right? It's that it, in a way it reminds me a bit of of Warcry in that it's a cut to the chase. You know what they what I've heard. I don't play Age of Sigmar, but what I've heard about Warcry is it's Age of Sigmar starting turn two to a certain degree in that the table space is so small that you you start right on top of one another and you're immediately throwing hands uh, and shooting arrows. Well, the Call of Cthulhu game from Simon, of course, starts with you trying to stop the ritual. So every, all the evil cultists have got together and they've said they're hoodly doodly and the I E I E if it taketh the Cthulhu rise, right? And so the clock is ticking for the bad ritual. And so it's, it's all the meat of the third act without all the drudgery of the exposition of the first act kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to playing it. Uh, and, of course, painting the miniatures that come in.
Huh? Oh. Good. Very good. That was a great G good, Oh, good answer. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey. Real, real good. Um, thanks, nice man. job. I'm going to go off of the Kickstarter mode for a moment and uh, just reveal the uh, another RPG that I'm going to try to run. Uh, Blades in the Dark. This is uh, put together by a fellow by the name of John Harper, Evil Hat Productions, and uh, it's a nice, nice book here. Sort of fantasy, Victorian, steampunkish, a little bit uh, genre where the players are uh, essentially scoundrels, thieves. Uh, they put together a crew uh, in a uh, in what they call an industrial fantasy city sort of a little bit of a Victorian feel to it. And uh, uh, there are uh, ghosts, some supernatural aspects to it. Uh, you're Essentially, you're trapped in the city. So uh, there's not, you know, everything will take place within the confines of this dark vault city. Uh, and the players put together a crew, uh, whether they're being a cult or a group of assassins or smugglers or things, you know, essentially they're bad guys uh, and girls and uh, uh, do missions and uh, kind of build their turf and uh, go through a campaign of that and see how that works out. So maybe get together a small group uh, who, who uh, are willing to do that and uh, see what we can do with that. So that would be really cool. Looking forward to Blades in the Dark. All right, um, go back and going back to Kickstarter. So Etherfields, um, Etherfields uh, is another game. Again, another story kind of adventure game um, in a dream world. And again, with really wild looking figures and things like that. But again, it's it's the just a really robust um, adventure game. Um, very creepy looking. Um, again, they made five million dollars in their Kickstarter and um, I'm just really excited about this one I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and uh, definitely be doing a playthrough of that when we some of it again it's story driven those kind of games are kind of hard to do there's some out there because you don't want to give anything away but um, once it's been out for a while you know um, doing some playthroughs for other people that play they can kind of see how you played it and we can do things like that um, Got an angle. Hearts of Woolen. Yeah, I was just going to say. With, with uh, Lowell Francis yep. uh, and others, uh, which is, I think, sort of an Oriental style yep. fantasy uh, it's a role playing game. Yep. And uh, again, I, I just back that knowing that, that Lowell is a great game designer and uh, writer. Uh, and so I haven't been following it too much other than to see on the updates. It looks like the, some of the artwork is going to be. Or all of the artwork is going to be really nice. It looks like they're paying attention to, really paying attention to detail on yep. the artwork. Yeah. And uh, everything that I've done that Lowell has run, you know, uh, in the past or, or designed uh, is always really good yep. and, and clever. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, I know he, Lowell's written some comics. He's done Rocketeer comic. He's done a Superman comics. Um, something else, uh, The Mount. That mouse thing, some sort of mouse. I can't. Anyways, he's done. He's actually done some some big stuff. So, um, I've got Alter Quest. Uh, just again, that's kind of um, coming out. Another Brady uh, Sadler Brothers. Um, I think I said Brady Brothers. I meant Sadler, Sadler Brothers for um, the Hour of Need. They also did. They're doing this uh, Alter Quest, which is a fantasy adventure game which looks really cool again, similar card system for that. And then, um, so many, God, my wife's gonna kill me. Oh, one that I, I should have right now, and I don't, is Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. And again, another big story, uh, lay cards out and build a map and adventure, and you can affect how the game plays and stuff, and it's... it's um, like Gloomhaven, like that type of a thing, or? Um, a little bit, yeah. It's Arthurian kind of legends kind of thing, but the cool thing is you all the, the heroes went out to try to solve this problem and then they didn't come back, so all the guys that really aren't heroes that are kind of the, you know, the, they're just... The leftovers. Yeah, leftovers. They have to go out and try to take care of all the problem now, and it 
great concept again beautiful art great figures that whole thing well people are playing it right now and um i made the big mistake of not paying attention and they deliver the game and you can get them in different waves well i picked get it all in one shipment and game companies i don't even i understand you know it's kind of nice because then people can save a little bit on shipping because they're getting all at once but i I almost wish it wasn't an option because I wasn't paying attention and now I had to wait all the way probably till August before I get mm. the game and got a bunch of other stuff with it. You only have 73 other games to fill your time That's with in true. the meantime. But it's just, you know, I, you, you see everybody playing it and having fun and they made six million. Um, let's see, God, I've got way too many games. Here's one. I got The Last Will and Testament of Obadiah Faulkner for DCC RPG and I can't remember if that means that that's for the that other if it's for dark trails or if it's just for dcc with a western tinge i, I really don't remember and uh uh i'm slightly embarrassed but uh, i don't really care i'll run it either way uh, but uh um and i don't you didn't fund that did you no okay so even if it is dcc i can run it without having right. some overlap right. and uh uh, but anyway, uh, that's just a uh, sort of a module, like an adventure type thing. So that should be coming pretty quickly. Cool. And uh, uh, along with, I'll, I'll jump in with one other one, which is, I don't know if you did this, Jim, or not, but the uh, Smoking Worm. No, I don't know what that it's is. A, it's, like a, it's like a DCC, I got to find the exact name of it, a DCC uh, magazine, like a fanzine. Oh. Which, uh, again, the PDF should be coming out pretty quickly here, maybe just after the well, they have the, the beginning of the year. And then you get a printed copy yeah, as yeah. well. And I think it was about $15 or maybe $15 plus $5 for shipping or something like that. Okay. Which, you know, it, it, it's uh, sort of tales, tales from the Smoking Worm. That's what it is. Well, Issue good. one. So, uh, you know, just... I mean, it's a little bit of a throwback, as is all of the DCC stuff, to where, um, you know, again, paying a premium for it, I guess, at $15. But to get an actual mag gaming magazine in the mail right. is, is kind of funny in, a, in uh, that nostalgic sense. And uh, uh, although I'll probably be getting it by PDF, you know, six weeks before it arrives in the mail. But uh, in any event... Uh, I thought that would be kind of a fun thing to support, and I'm sure it'll have the, the uh, you know, kooky DCC artwork yeah. and so forth. And, and, of course, yeah. articles and things like that that we can share, even though I'm not running that campaign. Well, I say, even speaking of that kind of throwback retro vibe, um, Dark Venture is a game I kick-started, uh, kind of a card-based adventure game, and... Um, really cool i won't go too much into it but it has it it has uh, actually i'm using the dice tray all the time you'll see in all the videos but mm -hmm. um it's really cool it's here's my stomach it's coming out um should be getting any time it's shipping now it's really cool artwork just has that kind of dungeon degenerate dcc vibe to it in the artwork and stuff and um i can't wait for that one uh real quickly i've got d6 dungeons dudes dames danger dice and dragons and that's a cool um, uh, kind of a uh, board game. As you, it's like you're playing a game, or you play the role of a player playing a role playing game. So it's kind that's of got a great a, idea, and it's really funny, and it's got a lot of humor to it. It's got great uh, artwork. Um, really cool. The company's uh, Certifiable Studios, a great company. They 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 make great little funny videos about their product and stuff. And um, Looking forward to that one. They're getting close to shipping. Z War One Exodus, the zombie game, modern day kind of zombie game. Um, looks really cool. They've already got one out. I can't think of what the first one that came out. This is kind of a furthering of that game. And I think um, that's about. I mean, of course, we've got uh, just got Black Rose Wars, which is a great game. Um, by Ludus Magnus, and then um, behind we've got Cine Tempora, which I've obviously got playthroughs on right now, and then Nova Atis is something which is kind of the precursor to mm -hmm. Cine Tempora as far as the way the game plays. Um, and again, that's Renaissance Venice with you know the Papal Army and the Venice mercenaries and 
fantasy fey mm-hmm. creatures and things in it, and it, it's really cool. And I'm going to try to do a playthrough of that, kind of show how it plays a lot like uh, Sin and Tempora. Words with Friends just came out with Lightning Duel. Uh, so uh, for my Scrabble phone game oh. addiction, that will be uh, yeah. that will be uh, up on the docket. Cool. And uh, Washington Redskins will probably end up with uh, either the number one or the number two pick in the draft, uh, oh. given their uh, lack of success on the field. Yeah, and as you can see, I like the Dolphins, so I'm not. I'm kind of in the same boat. <laughs> Um, I think, oh, and then there's one other one I want to talk about, which I just backed. I got to find it here. Um, where it is saved? Well, you look for that. Why don't we check in with Ken? Yeah. And to see uh, what he's been doing on the painting front with yeah, uh, miniatures. Okay. Miniatures painting. Tune him in again. What channel is it? Channel 10. Channel 10, Ken. Oh, there he is. Hey, Ken. So, how you, you talk about your painting? Well, the funny thing about it is, of course, you know, I have been painting the whole time. I've been painting the since 1973. You know, the first thing I ever painted was a plastic dinosaur. Um, and uh, I remember it. <laughs> mad at me for ruining my pretty you know oh you, you put paint on that yeah uh, it was fun right but actual for fast forward to today and you know but oh, you know, really since 19 i'm gonna say 1992 93 whatever it was sean that we went to gin con back when gin con was still in wisconsin and i bought all those cryomech miniatures from i think living forge foundries miniatures anyway a scottish company that was making them i think and because they had to buy one get one free sale at, uh, on sunday at the end of the con so i just bought a bunch of them because they were vaguely uh alien looking meaning from you know ridley scott or h i giga alien looking so you know i picked those up that was the first time i started painting with contrast paints what you say contrast paints only came out this year yeah but essentially the principle i've been using ever since then which is you take some future floor polish which is essentially a bottle of liquid acrylic and you mix that with your pigment and a little bit of water to thin it out if you need it thinned out which i always did 50 50 mix and then i would thin my paints out with it and wash that on and i always called that wash painting not contrast painting uh but, uh, you know, I get it because what it does is it highlights the contrast within the, uh, the, the mini- or on the miniature, I guess. Right? So I've been doing that for a long time. Now, the problem with doing it yourself is you never get any two paint mixed consistently unless, I mean, you could if you really were, you know, taking the time to do it with a scale or a measuring pipette or something like that, which, of course, I never did. Um, and... Uh, you know, getting it mixed right. You know, when you just mix it with a brush on on your palette, that's not the same as you know. I'm sure shaking it in a can shaker for you know an hour before you bottle it and send it off, like I'm sure Games Workshop probably does. So, the thing that's been nice about the Games Workshop contrast paints, and of course, the, the you know I would put, paint, paint stuff, show it, and people are like, did you use contrast paints on them? Like, no, I don't know what a contrast paint is. Well, this year Gen Con, I went. And they were, they had free demo, you know, all you had to do was wait in line to, to attempt to use their contrast paints. I used them, fell in love with them immediately. And I've been using them, not exclusively, but I've been using them a lot ever since, certainly for all my Warcry stuff, for most of my Warcry stuff. Uh, because wow, this stuff is great. It's easy to use. It's fast. It's already mixed. So I don't have to worry about it. And I love, I mean, it, it, I mean, not that it was a, a total chore before, but I have to say using Games Workshop's contrast has, brought the love of the activity back for me a bit. I think it's a lot of fun. You know, you push the paint into the corners and you, you drag it around over here and that sort of thing. And, and the immediate effect is great. And I'm no great painter. I mean, I think I have a decent tabletop standard. And the faster I can get to that and get the figures onto the table, because, you know, I've, n- I've never told anyone you can't play with that because it's not painted. But my own person, with, with the exception of two times in my life so far, and I'm in my 50s. Uh, I have always held by the, well, until I get it done painted, I'm not playing with it. Because that's always been sort of a motivational factor personally for me. But when Drop Zone Commander came out, 
I'm like, no, we got to play this game before I get all this stuff painted. And I did. Uh, and then when Warcry came out, I'm like, okay, I've got to play this game either by using proxy miniatures that are already painted or just the ones that I assembled. You know, part of the reason I do that too is because I feel like if you play with it and it's not painted, then you're handling the miniatures and before you know it, you've got, you've got your dirty little hands all over them and the paint won't go on them and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, that's been part of it too, not because it's uh, some sort of aesthetic thing that, you know, well, you are... Your figures are not painted well enough to be on the table with mine. That's certainly not the case. But, uh, but the thing about the contrast paints is, wow, you can you can get there so much faster and with much less uh, hassle. You can get a really decent tabletop standard out of your painting. It's beautiful. So, uh, and so that's what I'm currently painting right now. In fact, I'm getting ready, and I will be posting the pictures too, uh, to show the from. Games Workshop Warcry Chimera, the, uh, which I'm getting ready to paint LC even as Burrow. we speak. Hurts Hurt. from uh, Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. They, I know Dolphins are going to try to get a quarterback too. Oh, hey, Ken. Oh, sorry. Are you done? Yeah, your painting sounds great. Yeah, it's that's really good stuff. stuff. Yeah, you're yeah. Good. nice. Um, all right, so. <laughs> Uh, I also, another one by um, Ludus Magnus Studios is DEI Divide et Empira, Divide and Rule, I think. You're a Latin guy. That's coming out. Really See. cool game. There's playthroughs on that. But the one that I, um, kind of based on the Deep Madness universe, which is a really cool game that's, that's coming out. People are getting a bunch of that stuff in. It's called Dawn of Madness by... Uh, uh, dimension games and it's again another one of those really horror based you know dreamy in your mind just crazy figures and stuff like that um game coming out and it's just it's only got 25 days to go they're approaching god they're gonna they're gonna hit a million here soon and um beautiful figures and stuff like that it looks really cool and then one game i just found out about but i'm gonna have to wait and get it after the fact because i'm just tapped out is Divinity Original Sin, the board game. It's a um, game that you can play uh, on your Xbox or you know PlayStation, that kind of thing. It's a nice little adventure game. Uh, really cool story. It's great. I've played it on, you know, I've got it on Xbox and all that. But they made a board game, and it's got a really unique system for adventuring and combat. I just saw, just started to watch some of the playthroughs on it and stuff. It looks really cool. Um, let's see where they're at. They're almost at a half a million dollars right now and it just started today so that's going to be huge so just so many games out there i wish you guys would stop making them because i can't afford them i'm gonna go broke but no there's just it's amazing how much neat stuff's out there um it's a golden age yeah it really is you know we started back in the 80s and in this late 70s, late 70s technically yeah and it's just it's amazing where we started and where it's at now and, um, and we're still playing the same stuff that we played back then. And, you know, so it's not like those, you, you move past all that. You, we would go back and forth and back and forth from new to old. To, it's all relevant and just amazing. And there's a bunch of games that I didn't kickstart that maybe we'll pick up later too. I, oh, uh, um, Bar the Cult of Barnacle Bay, um, I picked <laughs> up. It was a Kickstarter, um, Dungeon Dive has a really good uh, playthrough of it. I really like that channel. But um, that's a great game. It's another, you know, dungeon explorer, explorer game and um, with anthropomorphic animal characters, you know, so you've got bears and shark people and stuff like that. And really neat system, plays really well, really good backstory to it. Um, just got that and kind of set it up and started playing that. But Dungeon Dive has a really good playthrough of it. And... Um, I may do one, but he's he's already kind of taken care of that. I think. Um, you know, when thinking about the the, the uh, gaming situation, it, we've we're still playing some of the same games or same style of games, and you know, Car Wars, BattleTech, Dungeons and Dragons. You know, shifted forward into different mm -hmm. formats or, or or versions or or things like that. But uh, it's almost that the the elements of of what limits are playing have reversed because back when we were in junior high uh, we had very limited funds and relatively speaking unlimited time so we could play a lot but but with fewer games 
and now it's we have uh, you know more funds available and can try out a lot of these games right. and just not enough time to to try all of it. So it's, it's a reversal of all that. Exactly. But it's a good right. problem to have. Right. So and let me ask you a question. So um, and it and again, it's not hard fast question or whatever. But it's just if you had to pick, and we'll ask Ken this too. If you had to pick one genre of game, let's say we'll break it into tabletop miniature warfare games. And then you can obviously break that into time period, but that basic genre, role-playing games or the the new world of board games, if you had to pick, and again, so many cross over into different worlds, but yeah. just those basic genres, and even and then we'll throw card games in there too, like magic and stuff. If you had to pick out of those four, what if you had only one thing to take to an island, what would you take? Am I by myself or with, with the gaming group? Well, you know what I mean, yeah, like... With a crew. With a group of yeah, playing. Yeah. Well, boy, that is a really f funny question. I don't know why I was just thinking about it. Yeah, it, about you it. know, I, I I could pick any of them. I guess if I had to pick only one, then I would say like the the new, not it's not that new, but the more recent development of board games almost gives you the, I don't want to say the best of everything, but the best blend of everything. To where a, you know, like a game that has a uh, uh, supplements to it or expansions where you can do campaign mode. Well, that's almost like an RPG. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, uh, and yet you could play a session within a couple of hours. Um, and yet there's still the classic RPG. There's something very special about that. And that's what we started with. And then, again, I also like miniatures games. It's yeah, just th the they thing. take longer. But if you're on a desert island, then we got all the time in the world. So, yeah. you know, a nice. Uh, so yeah, very tough to say. And uh, I guess if I had, yeah, I may revise it later. But if I had to pick one, I, I guess I would probably go with a really good campaign level of a board game. Yeah, see, I, mean, I think know? that's what the question. When you ask that question, you really can't. It's hard to answer, but it's also because of where we're at now with games. They all they've kind of blended together, and I agree. I think I would go with that same answer. I like the kind of campaigny, especially these big story driven, because they very are much like playing a role. Like, and you could add the role play, man. You know, you could yeah. add the role playing aspects as much as you want right. to to play it up. Yeah, because a lot of them, you know, again, you're building your characters up. You have experience, and yeah, if you're playing with a group, you can always do a little bit of the. Role more, play. more or less, the difference is you're not designing the character. Right, it's a template that's right. given to you, so but like, then what you do with that is right. it's like getting a yeah. module and then playing it. Yeah, mm. but not really a fair question or a good question, I guess. But it's just no, it's it good. makes it's you good. think, and it, yeah. it is kind of shows you how the worlds have just slowly, you know, from again when we started, everything was kind of cut and dry, and now it's it's just all kind of merged into this big thing. And you know what game I was just thinking about it driving over here just on the topic of what would be you know something interesting to discuss a game that i we did somewhat i think mainly you and i played it um but that i would love to see an updated version was red zone oh yeah. the, the nfl game nfl card game you know from 24 years ago maybe uh, yeah we worked with 23 NFL. years ago uh, uh next games and and you know, it's not going to happen, but I don't think. But right. I don't know if there's a really a market for it. What was, but, what was but, the logo? Something about punt? Oh, there was a, no, there was a review. that a, a, It was a positive review, but the writer didn't really really understand football terms. Yeah. And so he meant to say, like, you know, red zone scores a touchdown, something good. And, and instead said, you know, red zone punts, yeah. which is, no, that's when you're, you know, kicking <laughs> yeah. the ball away, right, right. giving it up. But so, yeah, the headline was about red zone punting, no, but he really meant, yeah, right. scoring. The baseball you know. game, I can't remember what that was called, the baseball one. Yeah. And then that was did, also good. The baseball one was yeah, very good. The X-Files, the card game, and then that kind, and then we got involved with them, and then that, that uh, that's kind of when they... And I don't them. really... You know, I'm not interested in fantasy football all that much. I mean, fan, it's really fantasy bookkeeping. But the card game was... Yeah, it was fun. It was a fun game, and, and, and I like the subject matter. I love football, so I like the subject and it matter. And actual players' pictures on it, because it was right. by Leaf. It's a collectible game that you would update every yeah. season. That would be the idea. Right. It just didn't follow through. Yeah. But uh, that, so I, I would like, 
this isn't the desert island question, but it just made me think of a, a game I would like to see. Right. Well, Kim, what would what would your choice be? Oh wait. Oh, there he is. Go ahead. I want to mute him so we don't have to. That's a really good They're question. Like a really hard one to answer, actually. <laughs> the way immediate well, Paul Lind whatever. response is chess, because it's so simple to, to play. But, you know, it has its limitations. One, it's not a lot of fun to play chess. Not when you get really competitive with it, because it takes so much focus, you know. Um, and even to be really bad at it, like I am, it takes a ton of focus. So... Uh, and it is only two player, so uh, I guess to, to to answer that question is if I'm stuck on a deserted island, but I'm stuck on a deserted island with someone other than me, because otherwise I'd just play chess um, or maybe solitaire, but uh, uh, with an actual deck of cards. But uh, I think uh, if I'm on a group or an island with people that I can actually play with, then. I don't know. You know, it might be Warcry, and, and, and I have a strong sensation that the reason Warcry comes up as my answer for that is because it's what I'm currently playing right now, so it's what I'm most familiar with. <clears throat> but, you know, it is very fast. You can play a lot of games in a short amount of time, and, and because of the, the the deck structure of the deployment, of the terrain setup, and all of that, no two games are ever going to be alike in that for reals. Um, you know, and... Uh, you know, I, I kind of think that I also, you know, my, I, I almost immediately go, well, Shadow Fist, the card game, because my favorite collectible card game, I, I have probably three complete sets of all the cards up through the first two expansions of that that are just sitting around collecting dust. But I always like the way it played. Now, the problem with that game, like Illuminati, the card game is the end game stinks in that game when you play with more than two people. Illuminati playing with two people is like kissing your sister. I mean, it really needs to be a five-player game with Illuminati. Shadow Fist does real well with three and four, but the end game sort of stinks. And so, you know, or it can because everyone gangs up on the guy who's about to win, and then it's the next person who goes who wins. So that makes me hesitant to, to actually to, to, to say that would be the game that I would want. So all things being equal, I wonder if, if the answer wouldn't actually be uh, something more along the lines of Dungeons and Dragons, a game that you could play as a combat skirmish level game, but you could also play role playing, which would, with infinite possibilities. So I guess I flip over all the cards. My my final answer, you know, but but, but then that requires preparation. Not that that's bad, but uh, but uh, you know, uh, yeah. I guess my my answer would be. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons in in 3D, the way we've always played it, uh, with heavy emphasis on, on, on blood sport combat. All right, thanks, Ken. So I think we're, we're kind of done. We've talked quite a bit here, but uh, as you can see, and then we got some playthroughs. I'm, again, I want to do Nova Hades here coming up. Um, whatever else, maybe more Arena and whatever other games we still have. Two games that write... Um, well, Western Legends, I'm, I want to, I'm going to run that the oh, day before yeah. thanksgiving i hope the anti-up edition so maybe we'll film which is a great at game. least highlights yeah fantastic game made locally in indiana what's the um um simon game um rising rising sun rising sun is that simon yeah eric lang designed it and simon game because he's got his little trilogy uh blood rage rising sun and then he's got the egyptian game oh yeah up, which i can't think of what it's called but and then um, pantheon pantheon the mythic game which again two really cool games and we haven't even had a chance to sit down and really play those yet i played u-boat once which is, a great, which is a great game i played the robinson crusoe game a couple times that's a but that's that. been around for a few years yeah, and really and uh, i've got the expansion that i've never played so yeah, yeah. a lot of it's stuff to get game. to I, i've had a hard time i think i i don't think i've won i've come close but no, all, I mean, we've just got so many. As you can see on the wall back there, there's a billion games and Wingspan and all these other things. So, um, but anyways, thanks for watching and hopefully you'll watch and subscribe and... Um, and give us your comments, you know, yeah, uh, what, what you think about what we said uh, and uh, uh, what you're looking forward to or what you've kickstarted. So maybe we get some conversations going. Definitely.
All right. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Cut.